This week marks the 40th anniversary of a federal law that forever changed lives for women in the United States. On June 23, 1972, President Richard Nixon signed into law Title IX of the Education Amendments of 1972, which prohibited discrimination based on sex in all educational programs or activities that receive federal assistance. Title IX is best known for increasing the availability of school sports to girls, but it did much more. The law established the basis for education and employment equality as well. Tennis legend Billie Jean King has been making the rounds on national news shows this week talking about the history of Title IX. I knew it was about education. For instance, when I went to Cal State LA and worked two jobs and 30 miles away across town, Stan Smith, who ended up being number one in the world, had a full scholarship to SC and Arthur Ashe, which who we all know about Arthur, had a full scholarship to UCLA and I'm over here 30 miles over here working two jobs and going to State University. Now, do you think anybody cared? Matilda Mossman is the head coach for the University of Tulsa's women's basketball team. The young women she coaches come from high schools where they were star players. Mossman didn't have the opportunity to play basketball or any competitive sports at her high school when Title IX was enacted. When I got into high school, the only, we did not have any team sports for women. We had golf and we had track and we had tennis. Gil Cloud is the director of athletics for Tulsa Public Schools. He went to Rogers High School in Tulsa before Title IX. Because when we were going to Tulsa Rogers, the girls literally at Tulsa Rogers in the 60s, when I got graduated in 64, they had, 30, uh, they had an hour on Wednesday evening in the gymnasium, and it was called the Girls Athletic Association, and that was it. He says even though Title IX became law in 1972, schools were slow to comply. Tulsa Public Schools did not start Girls Athletics until 1977. Cloud says Title IX was important to him because his daughter Kimberly was a natural athlete. She benefited from Title IX by receiving a softball scholarship. After graduating, she became a softball coach and is now the dean of a college in Texas. Coach Mossman says when she was in college, the law was still evolving. Um, when I went to college, um, it was the first year that Western Kentucky gave scholarships to women's basketball, and they only gave five in that first year, and this was in uh, 1975. This year, TU offers 15 women's basketball scholarships compared to 14 for men. Mossman says Title IX also improved salaries for coaches, but that also took time. My first job out of college was a college basketball coach. Uh, I was at the University of Arkansas, and as a, my first year as assistant, I made $13,000 and thought I was rich. And, um, uh, you know, and we, we traveled in, in vans, and, you know, our manager sat on the water coolers. And, I mean, it was, you know, and at the same time, the men's teams are flying to events, and uh, they've got full scholarships, and, you know, we didn't have 15 full scholarships back at that time. And in Oklahoma, that disparity continued until the mid-90s. For example, in Tulsa at the time, the boys' uh, baseball coach got something like a $3,500 add-on to coach baseball, and the girls' softball uh, coach was getting $1,500. University of Tulsa law professor Ray Yasser says many high schools in Oklahoma were still not in compliance with Title IX in 1994. He says that's because a Supreme Court decision in 1984 said Title IX could only apply to sports programs directly receiving federal aid. There was that moment in time, it was about a six or seven year period, where you couldn't sue on Title IX. It was, it was dead. In 1994, Congress restored the original intent of Title IX to apply to educational institutions receiving any federal money. It was then Yasser and a law school student filed the first of many lawsuits against high schools across the state of Oklahoma. When we sued Tulsa, not a single high school had a softball field, not one. And now every single one does. Today, female coaches' pay is on par with male coaches. And young women have opportunities to play in all kinds of competitive sports, from basketball to softball and soccer, even rowing. And Oklahoma teams are excelling. OSU won the Women's NIT Basketball Championship this past March. The girls playing here today are all hoping their athletic ability takes them to college. I just want to get better so I can just try to get a scholarship when I'm a senior. 
15-year-old Kirsten Chase began playing ball at the age of four. She and other athletes played 21 games of softball for two days and prior this week. It's a showcase event where college softball coaches from around the state come to evaluate talent. We've had several kids um, get scholarships out of here last year. Um, it, it's a chance for them to further their education, play softball, uh, and that's kind of why the, the whole thing was put together. Matt Cloud, son of Gil Cloud, has been coaching softball at Tahlequah High for four years and has taken the team to the state tournament every year. One of his students, Erica Sampson, plays softball for the University of Oklahoma. A girl that graduated last year, she started in, uh, in left field for the University of Oklahoma. You know, they were one game away from winning a national championship. Um, it was a tribute to how hard she'd worked her entire life. Her pass is picked off by Talia Mayberry. Mayberry with a race to the basket. To use Talia Mayberry is also a role model for aspiring young athletes. She and other star players are enjoying the benefits of Title IX, the historical significance of which they may not fully grasp. Tulsa also gives us the opportunity to travel in a first class way. Uh, we stay at nice hotels. Our kids are fed well. Our kids have you know, all the gear that all the, the other Division I schools have. I mean, we, we really want for nothing. And while women's athletics have come a long way since 40 years ago, it still has not achieved what men's sports have. There have been attempts to have professional softball leagues. They just, they, they don't appeal to the fans. Uh, the WNBA, uh, you know, that we have here in Tulsa, for instance. Uh, while the shock uh, gets 4,000, the Thunder gets 18,000 for home attendance. Ray Yasser says he's still getting calls from parents claiming their girls aren't receiving the same sports opportunities as boys. But he says just like the Civil Rights Act of 1964, there will continue to be challenges under Title IX until full equality is realized.